All right, so welcome back. We're gonna do um, 4.2 called piecewiser. So here's what you're gonna be able to do by the end of class. Um, graph piecewise functions, which we talked about last class. Interpret piecewise function is where we're gonna really spend a lot of time on since we already know how to graph it. And we already learned the answer to this that are all piecewise functions continuous. And so Ms. Johnson uses the idea of a roller coaster track. Is the graph a good roller coaster track? And if you say yes, it's because it's continuous. If you say no, it probably means there's a break in the graph or, or something like that. So I'm going to start you guys off. I'm going to pause you and then you guys are going to go to your groups and answer a couple of these questions together. So Rashid is off on another bike ride and he has a route that he likes to do on his own and has modeled his ride with the following piecewise functions to represent the average number of miles he travels in minutes. So far, so good. Okay. So remember, we called these sub functions, we called this domain, right? Um, there should be an equal to sign here. I don't know why I didn't catch that, but I didn't. Okay. And then um, it says, what are at least two things you notice about the function? What do you wonder? Um, I'm going to skip this for now. You guys can talk about it with your group. I want to get to the context. So here's where I want you guys to go back to your group and do. I need you to do slides four and slide five together. So number one, what is the domain for this function? Okay. And what does the domain represent in this context? This is, again, this, this question right here, remember, we keep talking about how are you better than Siri and stuff. I, I am better than Siri because I can answer questions like, what does it represent? Desmos can't do that for you, right? So what is the average rate of change? I want you to skip this question for now. So I want you to do um, number one only and this notice and wonder. I want you to come as soon as, I'm not gonna give you very much time. So give me the answer to these two and then I'm gonna send you off to your group to pretend that we have a group quiz right now, okay? Okay, so I asked you guys to go do slides four and five. Slide four, um, whatever you noticed and whatever you wondered about the function, great. Um, some of you noticed that these numbers tend to be the same. And one of them is like not equal to, and one of them is equal to. That's a really good noticing. Um, wondering is, I wonder if it always has to be like this. Some of you noticed that there were variables in here last time, and it kind of has that same structure as the as the bike ride in um, 4.1. <clears throat> So kind of keep all this in mind. Um, one of the things, again, remember I told you how I'm making you better than Siri and better than a Desmos calculator. Is a Desmos calculator and a notice and a wonder can't happen from Siri or Alexa or any of those things, right? The reason why they can't do those things is that this is a completely human trait. And as much as I want to program something like that into Siri or Alexa, I can only program that like those exact noticings and wonders, right? Once computers can notice and wonder, then that's what they call artificial intelligence, which some people say that we're there and some people say there's no way that we're there. So just pay attention to those things because this is what makes us kind of human, right? Okay, so this part here, it says, what is the domain for this function? So what did you guys put as your answers for the domain for this function? Any guesses? It's okay to guess. In fact, if you wanna put a wrong answer in the chat, I'm totally judging you. Just kidding. I'm not, get, I'm not gonna judge you. Someone put a hundred, very good. That is part of the domain. Usually the domain is from something to something or all the numbers. Ooh, someone put this. Someone put this in the chat. Um, oh, here, sorry. I was trying to snip my answer here. So yes, whoever put this, I agree with you. Oh, I can't grab it. Hold on. Eh. The move. I have layered things over here. Here you go. Someone put this in the chat. I like it. Except for this part right here, a hundred doesn't really a hundred means like this. Um, I think this is what you're saying. It's either this answer or this answer, Miss Johnson. And this isn't totally your your the whole thing isn't your domain. So if you do think that the whole thing is your domain, this is answered twice because you said a hundred. 
or 100, right? So I don't need actually this part. This is your domain written perfectly. So for those of us who are not used to the parentheses and the brackets and all that stuff, you should be like, why did she use brackets here? This is a she, sorry, so in case you didn't know. So she used brackets here correctly. This is 100% right here. Boom, boom. Yay. So your brain should say, why is it brackets? Who wants to answer that? Why is that brackets? Yeah, very good. Because someone said, because there's an equal to sign right here, Miss Johnson. That's why zero gets a bracket. So this one says equal to. Do you see how it says equal to zero here? Good. Same thing goes on the hundred side, Miss Johnson. Exactly. So because it said equal to, then I get a bracket. Yes. And vice versa. Because this was a bracket, that's why I got an equal to sign. Everybody get on this? Okay, you're going to hear me say these brackets over and over again because I want you to get used to writing this. Again, it feels weird, but again, you'll get used to it if you practice it. This is like one of those things. So any questions on this first part? What is the domain? So Ms. Johnson, did you just take the first number all the way to the last number? No, it has to do with what we talked about last time, right? <clears throat> we went from zero, we went from zero to 20. And then from 20 to 50, 50, oops, sorry, 50 to 92 and 92 to 100. So every single number was represented, right? There was no, I'm going to end at five and then pick back up at six and continue on, right? That's not the way it works. These numbers, these, fu these functions overlap, which kind of makes sense because in the context of this, which is our next question, it makes sense. So our next question says, what does the domain represent in this function? Like, what is the zero? Here, let's type it. What does the zero comma 100 actually mean? What, what does the zero represent? What does the 100 represent? So if you don't remember the context, here it is. So what does the zero represent? It's okay to be wrong. Someone put blue in the answer in the chat just so that you can be comfortable with saying wrong stuff. Someone put blue. Ms. Johnson, the answer is blue. What, Ms. Johnson, the answer is blue. <gasps> obviously, I love it. Someone said, obviously the answer is blue. Perfect. The answer is Costco pizza. Oh my gosh. This is from our last conversation. I love it. Okay. So, okay, so don't feel bad. You said the wrong answer. No one's judging you. Okay, but here, here goes. Let's read it again. Rashid is off on another bike ride. He has a route he likes to do on his own and has modeled his ride with the following piecewise function to represent the average number of miles he travels in minutes. So Ms. Johnson, is zero to 100 miles or is zero to 100 minutes? That's the question because there's only two things that they measured, miles and minutes. What do you guys think, miles or minutes? Come on, y'all. Miles or minutes? What does X represent? Very good. It, I would actually, someone, <laughs> two people answered at the same exact time. So one person said minutes, the other person said miles. The answer is minutes. Yeah. Minutes is correct. So here's what this function is saying. Um, he starts his stopwatch and he looks down and he, and he decides how fast he's going to go. Right. Cause he, this is basically, he's going faster or slower, right here. It looks like he starts at a speed. He goes slower. And then I think he goes a little bit faster, I think. And then he goes slower. Right. So here he's from zero to 20 is zero to 20 minutes. He's going this speed from 20 minutes to 50 minutes. He's going this speed. Sorry. After 20 minutes to 50 minutes, he's going this speed. Right. So in this context, right, going back here in this context, the domain represents 
time or minutes, which makes sense why our numbers match here and here. Because at any one given moment, he is that far away from where he started, or that's how many miles he has already rid, ridden. Does that make sense? Very good. Let's move on to the next question. It says the average rate of change is greatest in which time interval? Sorry, I, I forgot that I was going to skip that one. Find the value of each and explain what the value means in this context. This is what we focused on last um, class period, right? So you should be able to understand what G of 30 means, okay? You should be able to understand what G of 30 means, okay? Okay. So for G of 30, right? G of 30, this is how we say it. We do not say, I've seen so many things wrong, right? I see people say G30. I, I see people say G times 30. That's so wrong. Please don't say G30. Please don't say G times 30. That's wrong. So for G of 30, right? Which one of these equations did you say we should use? First, second, third, or fourth? Which one? Very good. So someone said, use the second one, Miss Johnson. Then someone else says, okay, but why? Why do we use the second one? That doesn't even make sense. There's all, there's all of these and you choose the second one. It's very obvious once you see it, but if you don't understand what it's asking, this all looks like a different language, right? So they said G of 30. So I want you to put 30 here, here, here as X, right? Because that's what 30 is. 30 is your X. And see which one of these is true. Is zero less than 20? No, good. Move on. Is uh, it, wait, did I say zero? Less? I meant 30. Is 30 less than 20? And you guys are like, no. Is 30 less than 50? And you guys are like, yeah. And greater than 20? Is 30 between 20 and 50? That's what it's asking. Is 30 between 20 and 50? And you're like, yes. Just for fun, let's see if it works anywhere else. If it works somewhere else, it's not a function. Okay. So by definition, piecewise functions are functions, right? Because I said piecewise functions, right? So a math teacher is a teacher. Okay. Is 30 between 50 and 92? Yeah, no. Is 30 between 92 and 100? No. Okay, so use the second one. Yes, so once I know to use the second one, I look directly left and I use this sub function. So then you just want me to plug it in, Ms. Johnson? Yes, so I'm gonna plug it in here. So that's 30. 30 minus 20 is 10. One fifth of 10 plus five, which is two, which is plus five. Oh, and that's why you guys all got seven. Okay, everybody okay with this? Now, if you take 30 over here and you plug it in, it's gonna give you an answer. And the answer, oh, one fifth, one fifth of 10 is two. Yeah, so I did 30 minus 20, that's 10. 10 times one fifth is two, two plus five is seven. Yeah. You can plug this whole thing into your calculator. If you, if you want to, you know, some of you like want to make sure that your calculations are correct, right? So 30 minus 20 plus five, trust yourselves. So it's a seven. Okay. Now, if I plugged 30 into any of these other functions, the answer would have came out an answer. It would have looked right, right? Kind of. Some of the answers won't look right, but we'll get there. Um, shoot. Okay. What, which one would you plug in for 64? I know. Shoot. W which one would plug into 64? Which one would we plug in for 64? First, second, third, fourth. Good. Okay. So now we know this. Okay. So now you can do pretty much the rest of this lesson. Very, very good. All right.